Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to Lisa's Coloring Corner. I'm gonna try this again. I just tried making a video <laughs> with um, this Easter coloring book by Jade Summer um, with my Spectrum Noir Aqua markers, and I tried the Daniel Smith Grounds on it. Yeah, that did not work very well at all. <laughs> I gave up on it. I wanted to get a video up. I have been so busy. Um, but I, I wanted to get a video created today. So we are going to just straight color with one of my favorites, which is the Cali Art Markers. This is out of the 50 Springtime Mandalas by Camelia Angelkova. This is um, a lot of Easter colors in here. So we are going to do an Easter egg in here. And let me pop a piece of cardstock. I know I got tons of pieces of cardstock around here. One moment, excuse my arm. All right, here we go. Okay, so how is everybody doing? Oh, I hope you are doing better than me right now. <laughs> oh, we're getting, doing so many other things today. I just, I haven't had a chance to color or do anything, but, um, Again, I wanted to get a video up today for you guys. Um, we'll zoom you in. Let me get my, sorry for that. <laughs> get my markers over here so I don't have to reach in front of you guys all the time. Okay, now what colors should we go with through here? How about some paler colors? Let's go with a pale yellow in the middle, and that is Y003. And of course, I'm going to be using the fine tips. So yes, how is everybody doing? It's been uh, kind of a busy Saturday for me. It was a busy Friday. Um, Just working on things for upcoming videos and uh let's do this lavender r913 there we go and uh yeah just working on this working on that i um had to refill some copics and my storage for my copic refills just was not cutting it. I think I'm going to go back in with this pail inside here. And so I have been racking my brain as to some storage ideas for my Copic refills because right now they, they were just thrown all in an art bin container. And yeah, they were, it was impossible to find you know what i wanted and they were all laying on their side r302 let's go with the pale pink and so i actually had two that were leaking and they weren't even opened so it's like yeah this is not working um, I wanted to get something together where I could have them standing up on end. And yet the bin that they were in was too shallow. And I had another art bin that I used to have markers in. So I had marker inserts. So I took the marker inserts out. And that thing was too deep. It was, you know, too big. So then I'm like, okay, I measured the height of the Copic refill, determined that I needed something that was about five inches tall. So I started doing some research on the internet and couldn't really find anything until I started coming across photo boxes. Um, they were about five inches high, but I still couldn't find 
anything where, you know, where that would really work for what I needed till I remembered I had gotten, and maybe some of you have this, um, it's a photo keeper. I can't remember the exact name of it. At Michael's. And this, it's, it is exactly five inches high. So it is exactly what I needed. And then in this case, there are, I don't know how many, like 15, maybe 16, because it's two-sided. And then there's little flat cases there that are maybe an inch high. And all of them fit inside this um, big case. There's teeny little cases. But it was the exact size I needed, the big case. I didn't need all the little inserts, but um, I tested it out with mine. I emptied the one out that I had, and yes, it would work perfect. So I looked on Michael's, I, had, I brought the app up. Maybe we'll do every other one here. Brought the app up and it is normally 42 bucks. Well, there's no way I would pay 42 bucks for that under any circumstances. Yes, it's neat, but it ain't worth that. Here it was on clearance. All of their storage was 60% off, but this particular case was 70% off. So I got it for like 12 and a half bucks. It's like, oh my gosh. It was meant to be. So even though I don't need all them little cases, um, it was still worth 12 bucks to me. So picked that up yesterday. Didn't have a chance last night to even work with it. I bought some foam board because I wanted to put something in between so that my mar my uh, refills wouldn't fall over if there was nothing you know no refills on the other side to hold each other up i don't know how to describe it <laughs> but i wanted to put some type of oh and i screwed it up already okay i guess we will make them all purple darn it can you tell i'm just kind of out of sorts today uh <laughs> and the fact I have not been feeling good didn't help. I have caught Maddie and Jaden's cold. If you've seen my previous video, well, a couple videos ago, I had mentioned that both Maddie and Jaden were down with nasty cold. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Oh, and I caught the cold. So, been kind of battling that now for a few days. And, uh, real stuffy. <coughs> well, I gotta get a drink. One moment, please. I am so sorry. I don't mean to cough in your ear. I really don't. But, yes, now I got the sniffles and it's in my sinuses coughing and oh. springtime colds to me are the worst so then I was so dragged out two nights in a row I fell asleep in my chair <laughs> and you know me I'm usually a night owl <laughs> and uh, no not not this week Fell asleep in the chair, woke up probably around midnight, <laughs> took Bella out to go potty, and we went to bed. <laughs> Evidently, I needed that extra sleep. And I was trying to get, during the week, I was trying to get this project done for a video I want to do for you guys, and I wanted to get it recorded this weekend. And no, that's not going to happen. So I did manage to get a couple of diamond unboxings. Diamond, yeah. Diamond painting unboxings done on 
Friday on yesterday, and I did put one up right away so that I had something to put up for you guys. Um, and then I do have the other one yet that will be going up, I'm not sure when, shortly. Um, because I'll probably put this one up yet tonight so that I haven't had a color and chat out for a bit. So I wanted to talk with you people. I, uh, yeah, I got that one project done. I finally got my refills, my Copic refills all up in a row bought the foam board thinking, yeah, I could separate each thing. I'll have to show it to you if you're interested in, see in seeing it. Um, but the foam board ended up being too thick. And because I thought, you know, I could make it just just tight enough, you know, where the foam board would stand up. Um, did not work because the foam board was too thick these the way this case is set up it works perfectly where two copic refills can fit this way and then i forgot how many can fit this way but it it works out just perfect but with that foam board in there no it didn't work so it's like okay back to the drawing board we go and uh I happen to think, first I did some research to see if there was some thinner foam board, and there is, because I measured this, and it must have been quarter inch foam board. Well, I know there's thinner than quarter inch, but I thought, geez, I'd probably need like 16 inch, 16th inch to work in there. And yes, there's some available on Amazon. Couldn't find any in Michael's or Hobby Lobby, but the ones to get on Amazon was like a whole pack of them. I mean, you'd have to spend like, you know, 20, 30 bucks getting this pack of foam board. And it's like, no, <laughs> no, no, no. I don't need it that bad. So I went back to the drawing board and I thought, well, what about some cardstock? Because I have some real thick, thick paper. I don't know what I bought it for. <laughs> There's no way it would go through a printer. I mean, it's, I can't even imagine the weight of this paper. It's, <laughs> it's thicker than your thick watercolor paper. So it's got to be heavier than the 140 pound, I would think think I don't know and I've been having Maddie use it up when she wants to color with her markers and stuff and I thought oh that stuff is so nice and thick maybe that would work and it does as long as I have some markers behind it to kind of hold the paper itself up um, it's working pretty good so yeah, I can show you that case in, in case somebody else has some Copic refills or even other types of refills they want to stand up. Like I said, it's about five inches deep, or tall, I should say. And uh, yeah, it works really good. So that project I managed to get done today. <laughs> At least I got something done. And I'm going to, tonight, again, work on this other project. And it's not just for the video. I started this project on my own because, well, I started doing it because I wanted to. And then I happened to think, well, maybe this would be really neat to show all of you. And, uh... I am in the process of getting stuff together for another video for you. And that is another one on color palettes. Um, another way to go about it. And a really neat way of finding out or matching up if you have if you're trying to figure out 
what colored pencil, what marker, you know, what have you to use for each color. Um, you can find out for any brand that you have, be it budget friendly, be it expensive, be it Crayola, whatever, you will be able to find um, that particular color in your markers or pencils. So I wanted to show you that too. I thought it was kind of neat. And I have been using that in the past. I found this system um, well, probably over a year ago and I like it. So I want to do what I need to do, printouts and find the website where I got it from and you know, get all the, the background info for you guys so I can tell you exactly if you're interested in doing it, how, again, you guys can uh, go ahead and get it also. So, yeah, a few things in the works. I was also sent a product to review... And in addition to this product, they sent me something to review with it. And there's a little bit of problem, so I'm in contact with them. Let's see. Hmm, maybe we'll do the pink, the purple, pink, purple. I wanted to stay with something kind of on the light side and pastelli for Easter. So maybe I'll even go for like a light green in here maybe. So yeah, I gotta wait until they get back to me and see what they want me to do. I love what they sent me, but... They just kind of don't work together. So, so I just wanted to, I decided I'm just gonna do some straight coloring. It was calling out to me. I couldn't decide if I wanted to do this in gel pen or alcohol marker and alcohol marker actually won out. <laughs> I have a design I started, boy, earlier in the week, I think, and I have not been able to get back at it and finish it either in the morning or at night. So that is still sitting there. So yeah, I haven't been able to color a whole lot. It is Saturday. Does anybody have any plans that you're doing for the weekend? We of course we don't we don't have much going on on the weekends. So which is fine by me. I am such a homebody. I don't need to go anywhere. <laughs> just too many things to do and I haven't even been able to diamond paint so I have no idea if that Minnie Mouse diamond painting that I really want to get done for Maddie's birthday is going to get done and her birthday isn't until the beginning of June but time is really slipping away on me so I don't know I don't know I would like to spend a lot of tomorrow on it, but I don't think that's going to happen either. Because I also decided, due to the fact that my granddaughter Maddie loves her Play-Doh, and I got her some more yesterday when I went grocery shopping at Walmart, I picked her up some more Play-Doh, and then I wanted to get her something... You remember when you were younger, or for you that are still younger, 
you do you have or do you remember having the um thing that you would push down on and then you had like a strip that had different shapes and as you push down on the play-doh it would squeeze it out um, of this thing in whatever shape that you slid this like ruler on. I don't know if I described that right. Um, and they do actually have something like that out yet. I wasn't sure if they would or not. We had a, a number of different of these yellow bars that had all these different shaped holes. Um, and this one only came with one. But I thought, oh, she'll like that. And then they also had a big box with a whole bunch of different shapes where you could punch out um, shapes in the Play-Doh. And I thought, oh, she'd really like that too. So I got her that too. And then I happened to think, you know, I keep hearing of people making this slime. <laughs> and I'm sure you have all heard of it. And I looked at the price of it in the store of, you know, the pre-made slime that you can buy. I couldn't believe the price. It was like five bucks for a container of it that wasn't even that big. And I'm like, oh my heavens, I know you can make it dirt cheap. So I looked up a recipe for it and I bought the, basically all it is is white school glue and borax. Or... If you don't want to buy the borax, contact lens solution is actually borax mixed with uh, water already. It's got the same ingredient in it. But I know contact lens solution is not cheap either because I used to wear contacts. <laughs> so I know that contact lens solution, although you get the more generic kind and stuff, it's not too bad, but... I got the the box of borax. So I want to make slime, all different kinds of slime for Maddie, all different colors, I should say. And I have these little containers, whole stack full of these little plastic flat containers with lids. And I figure I can put each color in one of these containers. I have a bunch of food coloring and you know mixing the food coloring using our knowledge of color right uh, i can make blue i only have the four colors but i can make green with the blue and yellow and i can make purple with the red and blue <laughs> uh, so yeah i figured i was going to do that tomorrow and then i happened to think you know Maybe Maddie would like to make that with me. So I think I'm going to wait until I have her on Monday to make that. And that'll save me some time now this weekend. <laughs> I won't have to putz with it tomorrow. And it'll give me something to do with her on Monday. So, all right. So there's one, two, three, four, five. Why don't we do a real pale, do the pale green and sea crest. 503, it's getting dark out. 523, 503, and 413. And I betcha, 326. I betcha that's one of the colors I have out in the other room yet when I I am also in the process for like two weeks uh, coloring a Jade Summer uh, picture, a chibi picture. And yeah, I have the markers for that picture out so I, you know, would remember. And I bet you that color is over in there. Oh no, it's not. Hot diggity. It is right here. Okay. So I think I think we will start with the lighter one. And I apologize if I am sniffling in your ear. If it gets too bad, I will pause this and I will go get a Kleenex. 
It's like I'm forever blowing my nose and it's getting sore. Colds are so much fun, right? <laughs> it reminds me when uh, I still worked after I, shortly after I graduated from high school, um, I worked for an insurance company and, uh, and I typed, I did transcription and, uh, <laughs> I would sit near this girl and both of us, every morning we would do, uh, don't you ever wonder question. She would do one day. Oh, those are very similar colors, aren't they? Yeah, a little different. Um, she would do, she would come up the, with the, do you ever wonder question one day, and I would come up with one another way. I mean, they were just, you know, goofy questions. One day she comes up with, do you ever wonder where all the, I don't even want to say it because it's kind of gross, but when you don't have a cold, where does everything go? <laughs> Uh, you know, the stuff that you're blowing out. Where does it go normally? <laughs> I still remember that it was just so good. I mean, we, like I said, we would come up with the goofiest question. I don't even know why we started that. Don't you ever wonder? Do you ever think about this? Oh, so goofy. But it's true. Where does it go? <laughs> oh, we are silly, aren't we? Just like, you know how some of us pronounce words differently than others? Not saying one's correct or one is wrong. It's just different. Especially with different dialects, of course, you know. We definitely pronounce words differently. Like... I would, um, many years ago, I would say, instead of often, I would always say often. And my kids used to pick on me for saying often. To the point now where I don't say often anymore. It's often. <laughs> they go, Mom, that is not how you say it. I said, is there a T in there? Yes, Mom, but you don't pronounce the T. <laughs> I said, well, I do. <sighs> but, yeah, like I said, they they bugged me enough. I don't say it that way anymore. Just like I always said, oh, what word was it? Oh, instead of now, I, and I still say it this way sometimes. I say now, you know, kind of now with a, I guess it's got a southern twang to it or something. And they go, Mom, it's not now. It's like you're putting another syllable in there, now. I said, she said, this is my, especially my youngest daughter, she would pick on me. And she says, how do you say cow? And I go, cow. And she goes, it's not cow. <laughs> it's cow. <laughs> I said, yeah, cow. <laughs> uh, uh, that's Bob. He says a couple words really differently too. Oh, I hope I wasn't off camera, guys. Um, and you know, evidently it's the way he was brought up with um pronouncing these words this way. Um, instead of kitchen, you know, most of us say kitchen. He puts an extra n in there, and it's kinchen. And I'm like, Bob, it's not kinchen. It's kitchen. Yeah, I go, yeah, there's no, it's not K-I-N. I said, it's K-I-T-C-H. <laughs> and he's like, well. So there for a while, he, I have to give it to him, he did attempt <laughs> to pronounce it the correct way. He would correct himself. And then he, I think he gave up. <laughs> and I just don't say anything anymore. It's kind of funny. Um... 
and another one and this one is so ironic because my ex-husband pronounced this word the exact same way and i don't know if you guys have ever heard anybody pronounce chimney different but both bob and my ex-husband pronounced it chimley like there's an l in it and it just drove me crazy i'm like you know, when I was married to, it's like, there is not an L in there. <laughs> and, uh, no, well, that's the way we always said it. <laughs> and yeah, like I said, I, you know, it has to be how they were brought up by saying chimney. Evidently, their parents said it that way, and they grew up hearing it that way. So they say chimney. <laughs> <laughs> So, do you know of anybody who says words differently than you? Just like I always said, Q or, yeah, coupon. My sister says coupon. Where, I guess, I don't know. And that's in the same family. You know, coupon and coupon. I guess it's like potato, potato, tomato, tomato. That's like, it can be Caribbean or Caribbean, right? I tell you. Okay, let's do this. I'm just kind of coloring whatever here with the purples and the pinks. Bob is out. I can't remember between my previous uh beginning of my color and chat that totally flopped or this one it's like okay did i mention that in this video or was it the previous one um but i think it was in the previous one so um he is out in the garage it's actually kind of warm out this weekend we're in the 50s we originally were supposed to be in the 60s but that didn't happen and it was all rainy today, so he couldn't do it during the day. He is, you know, this, I don't know if you remember when I talked about this car that we bought a number of months ago. It was before Christmas, but it was so blasted cold out. I think it was before Christmas. I'm not sure enough. You know, it's been so cold this entire winter and uh, so the car everything's perfect with it except for the um driver's window didn't go up and down so it needs a new motor which bob said isn't you know that big of a deal not an expensive part he went and picked one up today and you know it was like maybe 30 bucks for the part so he seeing as how it was nice and warm out thought that he would pull the you know even though it's raining pull the car into the garage and just work on it in there so that's what he's doing so if you hear any uh power tools <laughs> air compressor and that's him working out in the garage i don't think you'll hear anything because it's not that loud so all righty we're just uh, zipping along here. I think we'll go with the yellow in here. Can't see though, can ya? Alright. So yeah, it's Saturday evening. These weekends always go by so fast, don't they? Especially for, you know, those of you who do work outside the home. And weekends are the only time, you know, I have all day to get things done because of watching Maddie and Jaden during the week. So I have Friday, Saturday, Sunday to get stuff done. And boy, you know, last Friday was, was that last Friday? 
yes, I had Bella being sick and had to spend the whole day, you know, taking her to the emergency vet and all that good stuff. So, yeah, I did not get to record last Friday. And me getting sick and not recording a whole lot and not getting anything really done yesterday recording wise anyhow and uh not a whole lot today either <laughs> i tell ya i tell ya i tell ya I on screen yeah but my hand's always in front of you ain't i i didn't even notice that So, I am hoping to get back to a more normal recording schedule. I have so many things on my recording to-do list yet. We'll see when I get to all of Some of them are just general, you know. I would like to color, you know, do a color and chat with my ink tints. I would like to do a color and chat with using my metallic markers um, in the Spectrum Noir black background. You know, I have a few uh, coloring pads that are meant for metallics. So I'd like to do a color and chat with that and, you know, things like that. Watercolor brush pens. Just you know, a lot of, lot of working with my different materials on screen. I did have a request also to do a picture out of one of Johanna Bassford books. And, you know, not a mandala either with my gel pens. She wanted a more nature type of picture colored. So that would mean, you know, colored pencil. So, that means that picture would, of course, take a while to do. Whoops. So that one would definitely be split out into parts. And uh, probably many parts. See when we could eventually get at that one. And then I would just do my other videos in between. And then, of course, continue on with my diamond painting in chats that's maybe the only way i'll get to work on maddie's picture <laughs> although i do have that round one that i started with you guys so and that's a smaller one i think it would be really fun to work on that one of those mandalas if you watched my diamond painting unboxing from yesterday it was a special gem uh set of four mandala diamond paintings and they're all really small they're only 25 by 25 so they're super teeny but they're just they're mandalas and with the special gems and stuff on it you don't you, you know you really didn't need a big one and these would look really cute framed next to each other. Oh, that's another request I have had from a number of you subscribers is you want to see my framed diamond paintings. So, a number of them I have up on my wall. <laughs> but the vast majority of them are easy to get at, so I could take them down. The only exception to that being the set that I have in my bathroom. I have a set of three smaller um, seashell beachy type, you know, scenes with seashells and starfish and things of that nature. And the three smaller ones are hung up above the triple door. Um, I have a medicine cabinet that runs well, probably half the length of my one main wall in there. So up above the medicine cabinets, there's um, a spot where I put the three smaller ones, one above each door of the medicine cabinet. 
And then on the opposite wall above the towel rack, I did a nice big one to match. And then my shower curtain and, you know, soap, hand soap, pump, and waste basket, you know, everything in there matches that then. Matchy, matchy. And uh, so the ones up above the medicine cabinets would be hard to get down. So I think either I'll just take a picture of them or, you know, and show you the picture or I'll just bypass that one. I don't know. Would you guys want to just see a picture of it, of them both in the bathroom? Um, yeah, otherwise... We'll just skip that one, and I'll show you some of the others. Some of the other I'm going to just have to show you pictures of anyhow because a number of them have been gifts to um, my kids and to Bob. I made one for my sister as a thank you. Um, made that kitty one for Jaden. You know, things like that. So uh, a number of them I'm just going to have pictures of anyhow but I can show you the other ones including many that I have sitting back here that are finished but not framed um, I can show you those too if you want they're just sitting behind me on the table waiting waiting patiently for Lisa to get stretcher bars and make the stretch canvases and just kind of get at it just haven't taken the time so yeah so yeah I can uh, you know get at that video shortly and another outstanding request that I do have to do some research on and that is she had some questions in regards to watching other people's diamond painting channels she you know kept hearing some of these company names thrown out you know like uh who can you know and, and when they had problems and if i could explain that and um some other companies that they kept hearing of like diamond art club and peggy by and you know some other ones and so I am going to do a little research into the ones that I have not bought from yet. And then do, not on camera again, do um, a video on that. So they are coming, guys, I promise, for those of you that requested these. And the gal... <laughs> I hope you're still a subscriber. She asked quite a while ago for one on pan pastels, and I just have not been able to get back to my pan pastels at all. So that one's really been kind of hanging in the wings because I do want to start coloring with my pan pastels too. So, I shall see when I get to that one. But I do plan on eventually doing just that. And I forgot a yellow there. Any other yellows? You know, you have to invariably miss something, right? Just wouldn't be a picture if you didn't miss something. So yeah, I thought after this video, I'm going to go sit and relax for a bit in the other room and work on that project I'm talking about. <laughs> I had to laugh during the day yesterday. I was outside, must have been taking Bella out potty. And 
I actually heard some geese overhead and I'm like, yay, they're coming back. They're coming back. Spring has sprung. And all you mainly could hear was the leader just honking away up there. And he'd be honk, honk, honk. <laughs> and it just reminded me of like him saying, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. <laughs> you know, after flying, you know, a thousand miles, I can't believe these birds do this every single year. Oh my gosh, but yeah, I think I can, I think I can. I know there was that pond up yonder where we were at last year. Now, how these birds know right where to go again and where to automatically go, you know, down south, just like all the monarchs going all the way to Mexico. Just think how many miles that is for these itty bitty little things to fly every year. Not that I imagine their lifespan is very long, but it's just amazing, you know, what they have to do because we have such cold weather up here. That's a question I have for you guys that are in the southern states, and I imagine I know the answer to it, but do you have... You know, like your pesky bugs year-round, like mosquitoes. and Do you even have, like, horseflies down there and other biting insects? And do you have them year-round? It's the only one of the very few good things about winter up here. <laughs> we don't have any. Oh, houseflies, too. Ugh. I'm pretty lucky we don't have a lot of houseflies up here so they don't get in the house too much but mosquitoes every once in a while they will sneak in and you'll be sitting in the living room or snoozing or something and you'll hear this little in your ear oh there's nothing that bothers a person more is having a mosquito buzz in your ear or you're sitting there and you get bit on the arm or something. And you know it's only the females that bite, right? It's not the males. So it's like, God darn it, there's a lot of female mosquitoes. Holy cow. Where are all the males then? Jeez. Because out back, once dusk hits, oh my gosh. I mean, I know it's worse a lot of other places. It's, you know, it's bad enough here, but it ain't horrendously bad. I'm not by, you know, any body of water, but you definitely don't want to have standing water out by you either because you will be sorry. And with this being such a wet spring, I hope that does not mean we are going to be inundated with mosquitoes this summer. I believe I did hear, though, that with this being such a bad, bad winter, whoops, hit my waste paper basket, that, you know, with it being so cold and the frost going down so far, that it actually could have killed off some of the mosquito. I don't know. I don't know where they go. I'm assuming it's not larvae because that's what hatches in the spring, but wherever they are and whatever they are um that it may have killed some of that off so that would always be nice i mean i know they have to be around so that the bats and birds and you know other creatures have something to eat because they all eat mosquitoes amongst other bugs but ugh, they don't have to eat us Man, I wish we had more bats around here. 
when I was living out in the country, when I was still married, we hung up bat houses back behind our house up near the field because we wanted bats around. For those of you who like bats, you know why. Because they eat tons and tons of mosquitoes. And I'll never forget the time we had a bat that was drowning in our rain barrel. We had a rain barrel out back that we would catch the rainwater from the roof and we would water the flowers and stuff outside. And this bat got trapped in the rain barrel. And the kids, of course, they're as big a animal lover as I am. They rescued this poor bat, but instead of letting it go, evidently it wasn't able to fly right away. So they go get a towel and they wrap this bat up in the towel and they bring it in the house. Now this little thing is so cute. I know some of you are like, oh, a bat. But they are really cute. And uh, so they bring this in the house and I hear the story of how they rescued him from the rain barrel. So I, you know, I can't be mad at him for bringing the bat in the house. But they're, you know, we're all looking at this cute little bat and you know the towel was open and yep you guessed it there it went it <laughs> was now able to fly and i had quite high cathedral ceiling and of course it flew up into the highest corner of the entire ceiling there was no way we were getting that bat i can't remember what we eventually did to get it down because it was just hanging up there which, you know, I guess in and of itself didn't bother me too much, but I did not want bat droppings in my living room. <laughs> what do they call it? Guano? Something like that. Yeah, I don't think I would want that in my house. So, yeah, we, we wanted it out. And like I said, I can't... We had something that was like on a long pole and we rigged up a net on the end of a long pole or something and then went up on a step ladder or I think something like that anyhow and we finally managed to capture it and take it back outside so it could catch more mosquitoes go back and tell its friends don't go in that house you'll be sorry Go way up in the corner so they can't get you and they get you anyhow. But we were nice. We put them back outside. Because we like bats. Bats are our friends. Okay, what do you think? I think I'm going to do this pale yellow background then. I think that would be pretty. And that's all we have left on this pretty Easter egg. Not too bad, we're under an hour yet. Sounds like Bob's done outside. Wow, that didn't take him long at all. Now, we'll see if I am able to do all this without leaving alcohol marker lines. I don't think so. Because it's just too big of an area, and it just, well, not too big of an area, but it just goes every which way. So, but we're going to do the bigger area in here so you can't see. You know, if there's marker line over here, it's not quite so bad. because it gets hidden by the other part of the design, so. And with it being a light color, you don't have to be quite as picky. What are you guys coloring? Have you colored anything for Easter? 
or for spring. There's so many springtime books out now, it seems. And you're actually seeing more Easter books this year. It's like, boy, there for a long time. It was really hard to find Easter books. I mean, there's so many Christmas books, right? But, uh, and Halloween. I think I have one book for Thanksgiving. You don't really find Thanksgiving books either, but then again, it's not as big of a holiday, so. Not like Christmas and Easter, anyhow. But I was always surprised that, you know, because Easter's a pretty big holiday. And yeah, there would hardly be any Easter coloring books, but this year I definitely seen more and they're really cute. I love the Jade Summer Easter book and this one. This, the vast majority of them are kind of Easter themed. There are some that are just like springtime pictures or springtime mandala pictures. So not every picture is Easter related, but yes, I would have to say the majority are. There's a lot of Easter eggs like this one in, which are, you know, I guess when you think about it, it's sort of a type of mandala, but yet not really. <laughs> Same but different. <laughs> We'll see if I fall asleep in the chair again tonight. <laughs> uh, you know, the only problem with falling asleep in the chair, out in the living room, it is so hard to get up out of that chair then and get your butt to bed where it belongs. Oh my gosh, it's like, no, I'm just going to stay here till morning. No, I shouldn't stay here till morning. But I used to sleep in my chair, my recliner, because of my back. For years, I slept out there. But now that Bob is living with me and he is back to work, I hated to, you know, he was always trying to be so quiet because I was asleep out there. So if he would make breakfast or anything, he'd always try to be so quiet. You know, he's very thoughtful that way. And I just, I felt bad. So I said, well, I'm going to add this to my mattress or I'm going to try this. And I am bound and determined I'm going to get back in my bed then. And I did. It, you know, my back still rebels here and there, but it's not too bad. And I think Bella likes it because she can stretch out on the bed beside me. Bob, of course, because he has to sit, he has to sleep up at an angle. He has his own room with his own bed now. It's a mechanical bed, so... He has to sleep at least on a 30 degree angle. So, so Bella gets to stretch out. I have a queen size bed, so she stretches out beside me. And yeah, she likes it. Although on the weekends, a lot of times she'll sleep with dad then. And she likes that, too. During the week, it's just too hard with him getting up so early. You know, he'd have to get her up and then shake her in by me. And then she'd probably be like, okay, I'm woken up, so my bladder is woken up, too. Take me out.
And if she, you know, didn't have to go right away in the morning when Bob got her up, then, yeah, she'd have me up probably an hour later, if not sooner. So, yeah, it just works out better where she sleeps with me during the week. So we just kind of take turns. She's got the best of both worlds that way. She has mom during the week, and then she has dad during the weekend. And she is such a cuddlekins boy. If you wanted a lap dog, that would be Bella. Just curls right up in your lap. Or like Bob, he always sits with the recliner out, you know, so his legs are up. So she's always curled up on his legs. Sometimes she just sits there and whines and it's like, I think she wants you to put your legs out, Bob. <laughs> so she can go night night. And yeah, I think that's what it was because as soon as he puts his legs out, she hops up and She's always got to, you know, turn around a million times before she gets settled. Not as bad as what she does at night, though. Oh, my gosh. We go to sleep at night, and you can see stuff from the paper behind. <laughs> Notice when it dries, you don't see that. Um, when I take her to bed at night, oh, my gosh. She's like a carnival ride that's got to twirl around and around and around. And then she'll lay down. But if I don't hear her sigh, I uh, know she's going to be twirling around and around and around again. And sure enough, 30 seconds later, she's back up, twirling around, pawing at the blankets, making her nest. <laughs> uh, she'll paw at it and pull at it with her nails. Just like when she buries stuff, it is so cute. Uh, I just love watching her bury stuff in a blanket or whatever, you know, she's got a treat or something. She'll tuck it in so hard with her nose and try to get it buried so bad, and then she paws it back with her paws, and it's like, you are not gaining anything, dog. <laughs> so when she does that at night, too, and then finally she'll lay down. And I'll hear this big sigh, and I'm like, okay, she's finally settled. <laughs> and it's true, she will be. <laughs> okay, what do we think? How do you like? Is that a cute Easter egg? Kind of far out. <laughs> far out. There. I wish I would have had a little bit paler yellow, but that's as pale as I had. Yeah, unless I would have went with the dim green, because dim green, to me, is almost, almost like a cream color. It's not really green. That probably would have been a neat background. Or even this pale green, like a mint green. But the green I used, yeah, this canary yellow. Is that a canary yellow? That was the lightest yellow I had. So I suppose any of these skin tones, too, would have done. Would have done her. But, eh, that's okay. It still looks okay, I guess. So there you have it. Colored with the Cali Art markers. My, one of my favorite uh, budget-friendly markers. I have to say my Limoches are my favorite budget-friendly. They are, of course, more than the Cali Arts, but there's 168 markers, too, in that set. So, um, you, get, you get a few more than the Cali Arts, but, and they're very, very juicy. So, but yes, I love the Cali Arts, and I think that's true with a lot of people. They love their Cali Arts. So I guess that's it for today. Again, I'm going to try to have this up tonight yet. I think it's about quarter to eight or so. So it's going to take me a while to get this in the editor and rendered and, you know, saved and uploaded to YouTube. It's going to be a few hours yet of working on it and stuff. But it should be up, yes, later tonight. 
with tonight being Saturday night again. So, I hope everybody enjoyed this color along, this color and chat, I should say. And if you did, please give it that thumbs up. It does help my channel. And I will link this down below. Again, it's the 50 Springtime Mandalas by Camellia Anjakova. Um, and if you are new to my channel, please subscribe. Uh, again, I hope everybody's having a terrific weekend. And as always, happy coloring. Bye, guys.